Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. Hello everyone, and welcome back to my dwarf project. Now today we're gonna to be doing something a little different here. I'm gonna paint each entire section of the dwarf all in one, instead of the usual bouncing back and forth while I'm waiting for paint to dry. So we started off priming him black, and the first thing we're gonna do is again go after the cloth. I like to find a pattern that works for me when I'm painting and just follow it, because then you'll get faster and faster as each step becomes more familiar, as you know exactly what paint you're reaching for next. So if you can try and establish to do the same elements of a unit, the same colors, the same steps, you'll find that you can get through stuff a lot faster. Now, as always, you're probably gonna need at least two coats for every single color, especially some of the ones we'll get to later, like the flesh tone, you might even need three coats. And as you're painting the cloth here, just keep an eye out for what areas you're probably gonna to have to highlight and shade when we come to that part of doing the cloth. So you're not only doing the first step, but you're just kind of planning for the second step as you go through the first one. Don't worry too much if you get color on anything else. This is the first color that you're putting down. Anything that gets you know, crossed over on the armor, the skin, the beard, anything like that, you're just gonna paint over. Don't worry about it. Once the blue's dry, we're gonna add the shade to it. And like what we've been doing with the other dwarves, don't paint over the whole thing. You want that blue to be a nice, bold color. So instead, do that just detailed wash and only put the stuff where you want it. That's gonna be pretty easy on the lower cloth because those deep folds are so easy to pick out. Just put a quick uh, stripe of paint in there and that part's all taken care of. You can already see how it adds a lot of depth to it. When you get to the sleeves, be a little more careful. Only put the wash where the indentation is. Don't carry it all the way up the, uh, the sleeve to the shoulder. If the fold stops part way up, then so does the wash. And the very last step to finish off the cloth is to do the highlight of Calgar Blue. And I'm using a brand new brush that my wife got me for a gift. It's a Windsor Newton. It's one of them fancy ones. It was about 20 bucks. So unless you're really into painting and you want to make the investment, you don't need anything this fancy. But the tip is like pinpoint sharp. It holds paint and the paint flows off really well. It's a really nice brush. So if you are a big painter or you really want to get some nice stuff, I highly recommend one of these Windsor Newton Sable brushes. It is worth it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, just like with the shade in the recesses, only here you're doing the opposite, just add the highlight at the very tip and ends where the cloth really folds up and it's really, really obvious where the cloth is folding up. You don't have to carry the, the, the highlights all the way up the sleeve or it'll start to look like this guy's wearing pinstripes. Although at the very end, you might wanna put one little stripe on the shoulder just to give it a little bit more detail. Now, when I'm doing the details, I have my new fancy schmancy Windsor Newton, but when I'm doing the base coating, especially broad areas like all his leather armor here, I have an older brush. The tip isn't in great condition. It came in a package of, I think, seven or eight brushes for $10. That's all you need for this kind of stuff. You don't need a fancy brush to do what I'd say is the workhorse stuff. Work with one of these brushes until the bristles are so splayed that you really can't get a good tip on it and you're starting to paint stuff where you don't want it. But in the meantime, for your base coats, if it works, it's good enough. Once the brown base is dry, it's time to do the highlighting. I'm using Gorthor brown. You can use any lighter brown that you want. You can mix it up to make the leather look a little more worn, less worn, a little redder, a little oranger. But for this part, you're going to want a good detailed brush because not only do you have to pick out that tiny little rim around the edge of the armor, you're also gonna need to dab on every single pad. Now I know that seems like a bit of a pain, 
but they're such small patches that you really won't get it with dry brushing unless you get over everything else. You don't want to try and just paint all over it. You could, I suppose, paint Gorthor over the whole armor and then put a wash to soak down and, and darken it. But uh, as I would mentioned with the other videos, my goal with this army was to try and use washes as sparingly as possible just to test it out to see how it looked. Would it look brighter? Would it look a little more cartoony or comic book like? And I like the way that it looked on my test model, so I'm keeping to do that here. So steady hand, make sure the paint's nice and wet so it flows evenly. Just take your time to trim the edges and then tap each of those little pads of armor to give it that tiny bit of a highlight and make it stick out from the rest of the armor. Okay, so we got the cloth finished, we got the armor finished. The next item we're going to do is all of the metal. So start with your favorite base color. You're going to want a fairly dark one unless you want these dwarves wearing some very, very bright armor. So I'm using Lead Belcher. Anything darker than that would work. We're going to give it um, a wash and a highlight. This is one of the few times that I will use a wash to darken it down, but that's because this is a metallic paint. So it's not quite as easy unless you want to start dabbling in non-metallic metals, and those frighten me. You're starting to get a lot of the model finished and since we've been doing entire sections of it all the cloth all the armor stuff is done so you want to start being very careful that you don't accidentally get any stray paint or bristles or anything ruining your finished paint jobs so when you start getting some of these bits that are getting close to other things that have already been painted take your time just make sure that you're uh, you know well balanced with your arms you're not resting on something that's going to slip and suddenly you know, put a stripe across the whole model because that'll, that'll ruin your day really fast. Now, a quick word about the shield here. After painting a bunch of these on some of the warrior models, I found it was easier to paint the, the rim of the shield with the silver and then do the blue uh, wood on the inside. Doing it the other way, it seemed took a lot longer because the wood is slightly recessed in. So as I'm painting the blue later on, the shield itself will keep the brush from going outside. Whereas when I tried painting the silver over the blue, it didn't work so well. Now, I know I said we were going to do entire stages, but I plumb forgot. I'm so used to my bouncing back and forth and doing one color while the other one's drying that I moved on and started doing the skin while I was waiting for the metal to dry. So I don't know, shame on me or it's just force of habit. Again, find the way that that works best for you when painting. This is just one suggestion. You might mix this with something else, come up with your own. It doesn't matter. As long as your model gets painted and as long as you're happy with the result, you're doing it the right way. So when you're painting the skin here, you got your base skin tone. I find that Bugman's Glow, it's a nice base, but it, it is a little bit thin despite being a base paint. So you're definitely going to still need two coats. Don't forget to do the face. It's not very much, but if you don't and end up just painting it the color of the beard, it'll stick out and it'll look kind of weird. So for now, just blob it in there. It's fine if it gets on the beard and the mustache, we'll just paint over it. Okay, so back to the parts of the armor that I wanted to shade. This is the one time that I will use the shade, as I said before, because I can't do non-metallic metal, at least not yet. And I'm kind of scared to try. It looks so beautiful, but it is so difficult and time consuming. One of these days, I'll give it a shot and I'll let you guys laugh at the result. Now, I'm just doing the helmet and the ax. I'm not gonna worry about the rim of the shield. It doesn't need that much shading. It's more of just an accent highlight. You can do it if you want to, but the gun, the helmet, the axe, that's all you need to do. Okay, now we can finish off the skin. And I think these dwarves, and in particular these Highlands miniatures, are fantastic for practicing with painting skin because they're so muscular and the muscles are very, very defined. So you can get some really good practice of where to put the paint, how to, um, you know, just how far into the muscle recesses to go so that it still looks like shaded area, but it's not look like the guy has some kind of like blotchy skin or something like that. So use the model as your guide. If you see a ridge, paint it. If the muscle starts to curve downwards, start to paint down a little bit, but always make sure some of that Bugman's glow can still be seen from that initial coat that you did. Now the first layer is going to look bad because this higher flesh tone 
is very, very translucent. It'll look really awful, but don't worry. Once you put the second coat on, it'll come alive. It'll look fantastic and you'll be very happy with the result. Don't forget the eyes. Now this particular model has a nose piece from the helmet, but otherwise the nose is a great part to highlight for the face to really separate it from the helmet and the beard. But a little tap on each of the cheekbones and you can call it good. With the Null Oil Wash finally dry, on the helmet at least, um, and the axe blade will get some iron breaker. You could also use rune fang steel. It just depends how stark you want the contrast to be. I didn't want his head to be too shiny. So I just use iron breaker to give that little uh, cross part on the top of his helmet, a little more definition separated out from the rest of it. I probably should have put a bit of a stripe along the bottom of the helmet because it flares outwards a bit. That was my mistake. But put it on the, the, the top part of the helmet, those little cross areas, and then on the blade to make it look nice and sharp. So now we're going to give the model a little bit of pop, a little color by adding something that's going to stick out quite a bit here by putting some gold on it. So I'm going to put it across the nose piece on the helmet, then again on those little Torx or wristband uh, bracelet things that he has, and then there's also a medallion that's dangling at his side. But make sure you just turn the uh, model around, look over it, make sure there's no other trinkets or bobbits that are hanging off that you want to paint gold and give them a little bit of an accent. Now I forgot to do, um, he has some metal stripes at the top of his shoulders that I like to color gold and I miss him here, but I'll get him at the end. Now there's really only two major uh, things we have to paint left and they're both shades of brown. So first we're gonna get some Mornfang brown and we're going to do the wood on the gun. So you have the stock at the very back there and then also there's a teeny little bit of the gun stock underneath the barrel where you can see he's got it broken so that he can reload it. Now at this point I have to apologize again. Inadvertently I just naturally went back into my pattern of painting one thing and then painting something else while waiting for it to dry. The goal of this video was to paint entire items, all the cloth, all the leather, all the, the, the straps and the webbing, one step and then move on. And I messed it up. My apologies. You can still follow the tutorial and you'll still get a great paint job. While I was painting the leather, I noticed that I forgot to get the gold because there's a leather strap that goes over his shoulder. And I looked and thought, not only did I miss the strap, but I missed the gold too. So here's where I fix it. Now, normally when I paint leather using Rhinox Hide as the base, I actually highlight it with the same Gorthor Brown that I use uh, for the Dryad Bark in his armor, but then everything will start to blend together. So that's why I'm using this very bright or brighter orangish red to add some highlight to the leather pouch and distinguish it from the leather armor. You don't want it all to just blend in. Okay, now we get to do the other thing that I think really gives dwarf models a lot of life. Once you painted the skin on them, they look very much real, but the dwarf beard is just kind of the signature item. So you're gonna need two coats. We're gonna make this guy a blonde and we're definitely gonna need two coats with the, that light tan color. While you're painting the beard, make sure that one, there's no hair sticking out the back of the helmet. Sometimes these models have that. This guy doesn't but other models might have a ponytail or a tuft of hair sticking out the back. You also wanna look and make sure he doesn't have a super long beard that actually extends below his hands or arms and sticks out the bottom. I've missed that a few times and then you're kicking yourself because you gotta go back, you thought you were done. You know, it happens, but try to avoid it. For the highlight, I picked Du Shop T Bone. Now, the thumbnail for the, the video doesn't show the contrast very well. It looks a lot stronger here. And if you actually see the model, it's a pretty stark contrast, but you can add whatever lighter brown or tan color you want to really make sure that the, the bristles and the whiskers of the beard really, really stick out. And just like with the muscles, I really like Highland miniatures because it's very, very defined. It's clear that there are a few ridges you can paint on his beard and mustache that will make the whole thing look much more three-dimensional just by painting those half dozen or so lines. We 
are fast approaching completion here. There's just a few little details that we have to touch up at the end, such as this band of metal that's around the butt of his gun. When I was painting that metal band, I noticed I also forgot to do the handle of the axe on his back, so we'll take care of that now. So now we're on the shield, and here you can see why I think it's better to do the silver first, because the raised edge of the shield actually keeps the brush in when I'm trying to paint the blue. It's a lot more difficult, I think, to do it the other way around. And then one last time, we'll get the fancy schmancy detail brush to get that rune on his shield. Now you'll probably want to use the edge of the brush. If you paint with the tip, there's a chance it might slip off and you'll ruin your shield. So take your time, one or two coats, and it looks great. And there he is all done. Now some of you might say, you didn't do the shoes. That's because this is a rank and flank game and this guy's going to be in the second, third, or fourth rank. I'm not painting the shoes when you are not going to see them. Call me lazy, but guess what? It's good enough.